Your child has been diagnosed with a cortisol deficiency. This is a serious condition. You may feel overwhelmed and scared about this diagnosis, but we want to help you feel more comfortable by helping you understand more about the condition and the treatments that are necessary. Cortisol is a hormone that is critical for life. It's produced by the adrenal glands, which are near the kidneys. The pituitary gland in the brain determines how much cortisol is released. Cortisol helps the body maintain fluid and salt balance, keep blood sugar levels normal, maintain normal blood pressure, and fight infections. If too little cortisol is produced, then serious complications can occur. That's why daily cortisol replacement medication is critical to your child's survival. Typically, hydrocortisone and other steroids are used for cortisol replacement. These medications come in pill or liquid forms. Your child's dose of steroid will change over time as he or she grows. We carefully monitor the doses to be sure the proper amount is given. Cortisol replacement must be taken at the same time every day. Missing a dose can be extremely harmful to your child. If a dose is missed, we recommend giving the dose within two or three hours. Now be sure to set an alarm or another reminder to help you follow your daily dosing schedule carefully. When a child is sick or under physical stress, even more cortisol is needed than the regular daily dose. This is called stress dosing. Usually stress dosing means giving two or three times more than the regular dose. Stress dosing isn't usually needed for mild coughs, runny noses, and so forth. But please don't hesitate to call us if you're in doubt and we'll guide you in choosing the proper amount of medication for stress dosing. Here are some signs that stress dosing is needed. If your child has a fever higher than 101 degrees Fahrenheit. If there's been a serious trauma, such as a broken bone, head injury, concussion, or other serious injury. If your child has a seizure, or if your child has a viral illness that keeps him or her home from school, such as vomiting and diarrhea. Your child must be able to swallow the oral dose of steroids and keep them down. It's very important to use the stress doses even while your child is vomiting. This will usually be double or triple the amount of the usual dose, but you can return to normal dosing once your child feels better. If your child is so sick that the medications won't stay down, go ahead and give the dose as usual. If the dose comes back up, wait 30 minutes and repeat the dose. If the medication stays down for at least 30 minutes, a repeat dose is not needed. While your child is sick, keep a record of the number of times vomiting and diarrhea occur and how much your child has been drinking. Offer small amounts of clear sweetened liquids, such as Gatorade or Pedialyte frequently, about one ounce every 15 minutes. If your child can't keep anything down at all, call the doctor. A trip to the emergency room might be required for IV fluids or a shot of the hydrocortisone Solucortef. Surgery and dental procedures also require stress dosing. Please call our office for specific recommendations in these cases especially for surgery. We need to give special orders anytime your child has to have anesthesia. You know your child best, so if you have a gut feeling that something is wrong, or if your child isn't acting like himself or herself, this could be a signal that more cortisol is needed. If you've been giving stress doses for more than two full days, call your doctor. Look for signs of overtreatment, such as weight gain, a round face, poor growth, easy bruising, or frequent infections. Your child's doctor will let you know when to return to the normal dose or when to do a gradual tapering off after injury, illness, or surgery. You can usually lower your child's steroid dose to the regular amount once the fever is below 101 degrees Fahrenheit and the trauma or medical issue is stable. We've discussed stress dosing when needed for illnesses or medical reasons. Now let's talk about how to recognize signs that your child has an acute cortisol deficiency and needs an immediate emergency shot of hydrocortisone. 
Signs of acute cortisol deficiency include confusion, dehydration, dizziness, fatigue, looking floppy or listless, headache, lethargy, pale skin, not urinating at least once in eight hours, restlessness and or weakness. When your child shows these signs or is experiencing repeated vomiting in which the oral dose won't stay down, has had more than three episodes of diarrhea, or is unconscious to the point that you can't wake your child up, then an injectable form of hydrocortisone is needed immediately. Be sure to keep this with you at all times. There should also be one injection at school and one any place your child stays regularly, such as at a grandparent's house. You should be able to find this medication at your local pharmacy with a prescription from our office. Always check the expiration date. You don't want to be in an emergency situation and realize that your medication is outdated. You're going to learn to give this injection so that you can keep your child safe. A nurse will show you exactly how to do this and we'll also go over it together now. From this day forward, you'll always need your emergency kit with you. This kit should include the hydrocortisone medication called Solucortef, syringes with needles, and alcohol wipes. The medication comes in a mixovial or actovial container. There's fluid on the top and medication powder on the bottom. A rubber stopper separates the two. To activate or mix the medication, push down firmly on the top of the vial while it's resting on a flat surface. Here's a step-by-step -step demonstration of how to prepare and give an emergency injection of Solucortef. And remember, you'll also receive hands-on training before you leave. Wash your hands and gather your injection emergency kit with the needle, syringe, alcohol wipes, and Solucortef mixovial. Mix the medication by pushing down on top of the vial to release the cork into the vial. Gently swirl the vial to mix medication. Take off the top of the vial and wipe down the rubber stopper with alcohol. Take the cap off the syringe needle and insert it into the vial through the rubber stopper. Draw up the medication and replace the needle cap. Know how much your child's dose is in milligrams and how many milliliters of the hydrocortisone you'll need. This is an intramuscular injection. The easiest and most accessible place or site to give the injection is typically the outer portion of the middle of the thigh. Use alcohol to clean the skin and the injection site. Take the cap off the needle and hold the syringe like a pencil. Using your thumb and first two fingers, grasp the skin and push down lightly. Like a dart, stick the needle into the thigh at a 90 degree angle. Hold the syringe in place and pull back the plunger to make sure you don't see blood. If you do, it means you've hit a blood vessel. This rarely happens, but if it does, simply remove the syringe and throw it away. Prepare another syringe with medication and inject in a slightly different site. However, if this is the only dose you have with you, remove the needle from the skin and continue with the same syringe injecting in a slightly different site. After injecting the medication, place tissue or a cotton ball near the needle and pull the needle out quickly. Cover with a Band-Aid if needed. You may massage the muscle to help ease any pain. Place the needle and syringe in a hard, unbreakable container. Call your endocrine doctor or 911 anytime you have to give the injection. You may have to take your child to the hospital. When the emergency injection has been given, call 205-638-9100 and page the endocrinologist on call. The doctor can help you decide what other steps need to be taken to keep your child safe and healthy. If you're afraid you may have overtreated your child, there's no need to worry. It's better to overtreat than undertreat when your child is sick or appears to be stressed. You can't hurt your child by giving a shot of Solucortef that may later appear to have been unnecessary. 
On the other hand, not giving a shot when it is needed could lead to shock and other potentially life-threatening situations. Now, here are some things to remember about the emergency medication injection. The medication needs to be stored in a cool, dry place. The needle and inside of the syringe are sterile, which means they're completely germ-free. If the needle touches anything before you give the injection, replace it with another sterile needle before giving the injection. After the injection is given, activate the safety needle cover and dispose of the needle in a plastic container that you can't see through, such as an empty bleach bottle or laundry detergent bottle, and secure the lid. Write, do not recycle, on the outside of the bottle and duct tape the lid to the bottle before throwing away the full container. You can also buy a special container known as a Sharps container from your local pharmacy. Because you can't be present all the time, your child must wear a medical identification bracelet that lists the cortisol deficiency medical condition. Statements such as requires hydrocortisone, adrenal insufficiency, or the letters CAH are very helpful to others in an emergency situation. We have information for you on how to order a bracelet. Also, be sure to check with your insurance company to see if a free bracelet might be provided. In closing, we know you've been introduced to a lot of information in this program, and we understand it can be overwhelming and even frightening. Rest assured that with time, you'll be comfortable with stress dosing with little to no instruction. But until then, just remember that we're here for you. And don't hesitate to call or ask your nurse for more details. And be sure to visit the Children's of Alabama website to learn more.